todo agasalhado e vais sair assim. Ah, que sorriso onde é que está? Ah, estás a pensar que vais aonde assim? Tens que mesmo é buscar, buscar, buscar e fundo riso. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the fifth annual Ethnic Studies Race and Power Film Festival Director's Q Question and Answer with uh, Director Samuel Contreras. And we uh, were able to watch the documentary film Art is a Weapon on Tuesday in class. And of course, you all generated a lot of really great questions and input. And so I um, have kind of, I've created a document that I'm going to email to uh, Samuel later on after our session today so that he has a memento of this event, right? Um, and I basically just was entering questions. I'll also add the input on additional slides. And I really, what I'm trying to do in the chat is to kind of pose the questions that you all created in more so a kind of chronological or sequential order so that um, Samuel can answer them and share his story about the film. And so I just wanna show you where I'm getting the questions um, in terms of the document, which is right here. And I'm just kind of going back and forth and uh, between the two slides where I enter the questions. And so far, we've got six of them in the chat. So I'll go ahead and re-enter those first six questions in the chat. And then I think after that, um, which again, here are the first six questions, so quite a few. And, oh, well, the why murals is the first one. And then some, well, I think, Viv, how many minutes do we have for the Q&A total? Um, I'm available until whenever you guys, or okay. like, maybe as you know that, but I'm available. I'm in a hurry and I can stay as long as you guys want me to. I'm done with my classes already, so I'm good. Thank you. So we're going to get through all of these questions oh, uh, well, as I'm many as we can. So it's going to be work. <laughs> So I do have the first six questions. Um, and of course, if you all, if the questions occur to you um, as uh, Samuel is, is sharing uh, his responses, feel free to enter those in the chat. Uh, we're gonna start out with these uh, first six questions. So the first question that a student had is why murals? Um, yes, I think we need to start thinking about art. Right, and so how art can be sometimes very elitist, right? In the sense of who has access to art to begin with, right? So, you know, sometimes art, it's in a museum in which obviously you have to go into your car, right? You spend money on gas, not to mention the fee. And sometimes you go to this, you know, big fancy museums, the fee is not gonna be cheap, right? Um, so a lot of folks like like us, you know, that come from um, really uh, low income communities, low income families, right, working families, 
uh, I think we really have the opportunity to have access to this um, art, right? And so it is important to think about art as, you know, uh, as uh, being accessible to the people, being accessible to the public. And what a better way than a mural, right? When you are walking down the street and I mean, I feel, um, for instance, uh, murals in the film are actually done uh, nearby um, uh, schools. And so I think that's really important to think about, you know, people, especially children, as they walk uh, and on the way to school, that they see this, you know, beautiful imagery, right? That it is not just about seeing the image, but actually make them think about, you know, different issues, make them think about, you know, their own communities, right? So, um, when it comes to actually talking about accessibility, I think murals offers you know this um, window, this door to the world, right? In which you can just go walking in your community and you see something beautiful on the wall. I mean, I think it has the power to uplift you, right? It has the power to empower the community uh, and says, you know, this is my story, uh, in which we can talk about, for instance, about representation too. We need representation, we need representation in every single sense, right, in the mass media, but also used to be represented in your own community, specifically, for, let's say, for instance, through through murals. I think that's such a, a healing and empowering a thing to, to see, and it can be especially, like I said, as, as a person of a color, as a person that lives in a not, let's say, the nicest place on, on town, but when you see this mural that it's there and it's representing you, representing you and telling your story, it just can be, you know, light changing in a way too. Thank you, uh, Samuel. I love that that it's healing and it's in, it's in, empowering to see ourselves um, in our communities to actually build those really critical community connections by seeing the full range of our community members represented in these, I mean, really also beautiful ways. So uh, the next question is. Do you live in Fresno? <laughs> yeah, so let me just back it up a little bit, right? Um, and so uh, I'm a proud immigrant. Um, I was born and raised in Guanajuato, Mexico. I arrived here to Fresno when I was 11 years old without speaking a word of English, by the way. So a little bit of my accent, you, you feel it. <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, so my parents, you know, settled here in Fresno. Uh, my dad used to come back and forth. Um, you know, between Mexico and here in the Central Valley, uh, he would come and work in the uh, in the um, processing, uh, fruit processing, uh, uh, packing uh, factories, right? And so he would spend six months here and six months in Mexico. Uh, and so, yeah, and so I migrated with my family uh, in 1999, uh, which is a long time ago. Um, and so, yes, I went to the local uh, Fresno, uh, McLean High School here in Fresno. Um, and so, you know, I had the opportunity, you know, to go out, you know, and explore and get my education in other places. Uh, a little bit about me, I get, I got my BA in film studies and media studies from UC Berkeley and my MFA degree from a social documentation from UC Santa Cruz. Um, but I always found myself coming back to Fresno, coming back from the Central Valley, because it goes back to this sense of building community. Uh, you know, and going into this sense about, you know, uh, keeping talent and I think in our own voices in our community. Uh, sometimes I know the Central Valley, uh, specifically Fresno and overall Central Valley is not that um, the easiest place to live, right? When it comes to, um, you know, economical opportunities, uh, professional development, right? And not to mention all the poverty and all these, you know, social issues that go with it, which we have plenty of. Um, however, I feel that, you know, specifically folks like us that are trying to get an education, that are trying to, um, you know, to kind of climb the social ladder too, right? It is important to come back and, and give back to your community and, and paying it forward too, you know, you just like a lot of folks help me, you know, to succeed and go into this, you know, universities and stuff like that. I think it's important to pay it forward too. And, for instance, now I'm a I'm an adjunct professor here at Fresno State. I also was a professor at um at San Islao State as well, too, with the ethnic studies department, which I miss. Uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, yeah, and, and I think it's important that, right? Um to come back to your community, especially 
communities that really need your perspective, that really need your talent, right? That really need the uniqueness and, and how can you contribute to that? And at the same time, making a living, you know, uh, doing, helping your community, first of all, perhaps doing what you enjoy doing. And I think that that's important to me to always come back because I feel, um, you know, Fresno is my home now. Uh, and so uh, despite all the difficulties perhaps, and the challenges that comes with living in the Central Valley, I still find myself uh, being here and not planning anything to, you know, no plans to move at all. So I, I could continue to be here and try to give as much as, as possible to my community. Well, thank you for sharing that. And uh, the students did learn a bit about your background uh, that I shared in class on Tuesday. And out of curiosity, I know with someone who wrote the question, they had said, uh, included here in Fresno. So I'm curious for any of uh, uh, students, if you have lived, currently live, or know someone or has, have family members who live in Fresno, just please enter a one in the chat because I got the impression that at least one of our students uh, may, you know, currently live in, in Fresno. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Oh, okay. So, or know of someone or have lived. Yeah, lots of, lots of ones. So I didn't realize we had such a strong Fresno connection. Um, the next question is, I uh, actually am going to jump down first to five, because I think this is a really uh, you know, our why, our sense of purpose is what really propels us forward. I'd say that's the wind beneath our wings. It gives us the liftoff throughout, throughout our life. Um, was there a personal event or experience that you went through that made you want to make this film? Um, yeah, uh, most definitely. I mean, it was, you know, uh, go back a little bit two years ago, um, you know, during the peak of the pandemic in, you know, early 2020, right? I think just as a collective, I think it was a rough time for everyone, right? Um, it was, I mean, the uncertainty about our health, right? The economic uh, component over to being locked, you know, lock, locked down in our houses, right? I know you were, um, we were at school, I don't know where, you know, you just had to go in lockdown. So I think it was 2020, I think it was a really hard time for us, for everyone, right? Um, and so uh, we saw, you know, also the, the devastating video of George Floyd. Uh, I think, you know, if you haven't seen it, I think everyone has seen it at this time, right? And so it really speaks about, you know, the once again, about the power of image, right? And so how, because of this video, you know, it created a movement, right? To really uh, defend and say, you know, Black life matters and, you know, uh, uh, and overall lives of color matter, right? And so we, you know, you're seeing that uh, really um, dramatic and really traumatic um, video or George Floyd's, right? Just being pretty much executed, right? It was just so devastating for a lot of folks, right? Especially for a lot of folks of color that have endured a lot of injustices in this throughout the history of this country. And still we are going through that as we speak. And so, you know, and, and for me, I think it was important to transform that angriness, that, you know, kind of negative energy into something positive, into something beautiful, right? Because yes, we can be bitter about this and not do anything, right? Uh, but for me, it was, how can I invest my energy? How can I invest my talent for something productive, for something that perhaps can even just initiate a conversation just like we're doing right now? I think it will be worth it. Uh, for this particular project, like I said, um, I didn't get any type of funding. I didn't get any type of, um, you know, it was a passion project uh, in which um, I'm a part of this nonprofit uh, artist collective. We are called Dulce Upfront. And so um, during that, you know, during the 2020 pandemic, like I said, a lot of us are freelancers. A lot of us, you know, make a living out of our art, right? And we work through a social justice lens. Um, unfortunately, like I said, we went to lockdown. So a lot of us didn't have gigs, didn't have that much you know, going on. Uh, but despite that, we feel that we need to uh, activate ourselves and do something about this movement that was going on, not just in, in Fresno or Central Valley, but in the whole nation. And so how and we asked ourselves, how can we contribute to this movement, right? And so we just came out with the idea, let's let's just do a mural, just one, let's 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 put it, right? Um, and so we put it on Instagram and it just blew up and people started hitting us up 
You know, how come, can I donate uh, money? Can I donate pain? Can I donate water? Can I donate something, right? And so I don't know where, uh, fast forward at the end of summer with these 16 murals. And it was just, um, you know, a community support. It was all funded and, you know, the artists donated the time. And I knew there was this. Uh, this is, has not been done in Fresno. Anything you know similar to this has never been done in Fresno. Um, so I thought it was a unique opportunity to for me to really uh, document this process, the artists, the community, right? And so, um, yeah, I, I, I thought um, it will be important to uh, to do it here in Fresno and to do murals. So I think it was really really important to to have that and. And that inspirational, right? How can you get inspiration from your community? And as the you know, as time progresses, uh, as you know, we're building this, um, you know, making these murals, I just feel more inspired to keep on going, even though it was 110, 105 degrees outside, you know, me with my camera until like nine, nine a.m. You know, p.m. It was freaking uh, hot, as we know, we get here in the Central Valley. Uh, but despite that, like I said, I really enjoy the process. I really enjoy shooting it, editing it. Um, and so, yeah, it was a way for once again for me to even have my own voice heard, right? Having uh, as a sense of expression of, of um, it kind of in a way is liberating, right? To have your art, your your sense of, um, you know, uh, injustice to be, just have your voice being heard and amplify the voices of others. I think that's what really inspired me to, to, to do um, this film. Wow, thank you so much for sharing that. And also um, what you were sharing about how do we transmute the feelings of anger and, and really rage and impotence of powerlessness in the face of all of this uh, ongoing injustice. And uh, one of our students on Tuesday was posing this question. It was actually Aaron. And, um, and this is like, it, this is how we do it. We come together in love as community and um, we take action and right not and then obviously there's a range of different kinds of actions that we can choose to take individually collectively and the fact that you all chose art is so powerful and so impactful and i know students have also been for uh for a while in the class been asking about what can i do you know where do i start and that was some of the questions included for you and it's amazing that you all got together as a collective you were already part of an organization and that then once that got posted to social media i would say especially on instagram there's again you can feel free to share your instagram handle somewhere well, uh the instagram uh, handle of the artist collective um and i subscribe to those kinds of accounts so even like scrolling through your timeline you if something speaks to you um you can always reach out. You can always DM or direct message the individual. And I will say that a lot of the ways and, and ask, how can I support? How can I show up? And even if it's contributing, uh, whether it's PayPal or Venmo or cash apping, a dollar, five dollars, cumulatively, that makes all of the difference in the world. Because my next question was going to be, um, given the circumstances during COVID and artists really, really being hit very hard because of being impacted by not having gig, gigs. Um, like how did they come up with all of the materials and, and the pain and the, and so it was through the collective coming together. Thank you for sharing this. So Buse up front, so Buse is like sweets mm -hmm, up mm -hmm. front, which I think is also such a powerful name that speaks to how do we transmute and how do we transform the right inner feelings that we're going to feel um, and it's a kind of alchemy, which art is itself as well. And so I love in the name that it says it means sweet uh, up front. So um, make sure that we get those and I will share these handles. These are Instagram handles on our Canvas course shell as well. Mm -hmm. So the next question is, did you choose which individuals were interviewed? If so, why? them uh yes uh, that's a really interesting question um and so like i said i did um went to most of the um uh, you know the process of the artist painting the um uh the murals but i think uh in i mean like i said hopefully i wish i had more time to edit more resources to edit include 
everyone in the film, right? However, like I said, as an independent filmmaker, as specific for this film, like I said, I didn't have no financial support. And of course, you know, I had to work and all this stuff, right? Uh, so I wish I wouldn't put everyone in the film and make it longer and stuff like that. But I think the bottom line was to have representation out of, as you, as you guys saw from the murals, we have representation from different end groups, issues, right? That we struggle as a society. And so I try to have a balance of between, right? Between uh, women, between, um, you know, African-American women, uh, artists, Latino men, right? So have like a little balance. Once again, going back to this notion of representation, but not just the artists, right? But what they represent and they are in the murals and trying to find the balance and trying to include everyone, right? As you guys saw on the film, we talk about issues when it comes, for instance, the Native American community, the trans community, right? Um, and of course, the Latino community and all these different issues, right? And, and, and different artists have different perspectives. Uh, and so I try to, once again, find that sweet spot between the balancing of different voices and different perspectives and different meaning behind the, uh, the murals. Um, so it was quite challenging. Uh, and I, but I think that's the beauty of the community filmmaking that you have all these materials, all this perspective, all this information, and really it's just, you know, finding it, how you're gonna present it to the public so they can understand it or they can make them think, provoke thoughts, right? And be critical about these issues. Um, so yeah, it, it was a, a really lengthy and, and difficult process because everyone has so much to say Everyone wanted to be in the film, of course, and I really appreciate that. But is yeah, I, I don't have the time or the money to do so, <laughs> you know. So hopefully they'll, they'll forgive me. Uh, but nevertheless, I think um, you know, I, I think that the film overall found that sweet spot and and the balancing of trying to have all this perspective. I don't, I, I didn't want it to be also really overwhelming too, because you know, a lot of these issues are heavy. Um, but I want to focus more on the beauty of it too, you know, how this uh, artist came to this idea to paint these murals, why they painting them, what is the motivation, what does it mean? Um, but yeah, like I said, and um, but you know, that's not the end uh, of, of me doing this type of project. So, you know, I'm definitely going to continue doing this, this type of projects and trying to, once again, to have the different voices, right, that there has been um, denied, you know, the voice has been heard and this uh, you know, in, in the current landscape of representation, right? And so that's kind of my, my goal to once again amplify and, 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 and give a voice to those that have been voiceless in the past. And so trying to find a balance and twist for everyone to have the story been, been told. And it's, it's, it's a challenge for the a filmmaker, the commentarian, and I just really enjoyed the process. Thank you for sharing that. And it is, uh, I mean, so much of this is messy and it gets complicated and, um, I also think that um, obviously it's what's so important about your experience is balancing out the fact that you have to work, the fact that, I mean, making a, there's so, it takes so much to make even a short film. And then part of that process is deciding what's going to be included, what's going to not be included. It's, 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 it's a full blown production pun into, I mean, really, uh, the alignment between literal, literally producing a film and also going through all of those decisions. And I think also, and Samuel Contreras also made a documentary film for Stan State about the student activism that we learned about in this class back in, the, in, in 2019 in particular with the 11 recommendations that we learned about. And that was uh, screened and kind of debuted at the Warrior Cross Cultural Center back in the fall. And so I know there was a lot, like as someone who was actually interviewed for the project, we were told up front that everybody wasn't going to make it in. And you know, it was just, uh, and our full interviews were not going to make it in uh, for those of us who did make it into the film. And that's, that's part of the process of filmmaking. So I'm going to, I do have some other questions from the, um, uh, that the students pose, and I do want to give you all an opportunity to ask uh, questions in real time since we do have, you know, some while here. One question that I think that it came across in different ways um, is what impact do you think, so it's uh, in addition to 
how do you think murals empower people, which I think you've really spoken to, but have you witnessed a change in Fresno through this art? And in particular, um, what role do local empowerment projects play within the bigger picture and for government? And for example, do you think that this had an impact on the city of Fresno not even at the just the government kind of official formal levels, but also at the community wide level. Um, yeah, I, I think so. I mean, uh, for instance, you guys saw at the beginning of the film, the march, the protest, right? It took place at City Hall. I mean, we have, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, five, four thousand folks there on the march which I think is what's truly historic. Because yeah, I mean, uh, as we know, Central Valley is not known for the, its activism. Um, and so just having, for instance, um, that protest that really sparked all this movement here in Fresno. So, um, and so we see, right, how even, you know, have protesting and all of that took, uh, in, led to the creation of the murals. And so uh, if you, uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, Fresno specifically has a long history of muralism. Uh, Fresno is one of, of, we can say the makers, for instance, of Chicano muralism. And so we have, for instance, this um, legend, uh, uh, Ernie Palomino, you should look him up, I, which I did a film about it. I'll share it with you guys too, uh, about murals in his legacy. Ernie Palomino is his name. Um, so Fresno, like I said, specifically to Chicano uh, muralism is has a long history of that. Fresno has the long rich history of muralism, right? And so uh, for instance, now we have a mural district here in Fresno, right? Uh, I think in the last couple of, of years and decades, I will say how we have seen a lot of these murals popping out everywhere, right? Is, is it becoming more popular? Is it becoming more acceptable? For folks to to um to for instance to allow artists to have you know their those murals painted in different places businesses you name it right um and so yeah I think you know it has it has been that that Fresno has the long legacy of muralism and it still continue to be and it's still going really strong and once again just thinking about the impact that that has you know not just on the community, you know, in, those, um, in, in the personal level too, right? Uh, but for instance, um, when we premiered the, the film here in Fresno, the mayor was there, uh, which he is a really um, controversial figure to say the least, right? Um, and so I talked to him and be like, hey, we need more funding for arts, you know? And so, um, and he was like, okay, yeah, you know, he his politician spill, you know, type of thing, speech. Uh, but I think it's part of the conversation, right? And kind of use it, for instance, this film as an argument. Why do we need funding for the arts? Something that, you know, is uh, most of the time being neglected, for instance, in the public schools, right? In a community, uh, sometimes art is not really appreciative uh, of some folks, but when you see the result of that, and perhaps, it can change people's minds when it comes to, you know, just accepting the art itself, right? When uh, representing communities of color, for instance, right? Uh, when we, for instance, can uh, persuade politicians to, uh, and also in the government to actually give us more funding through the arts, specifically in public schools, right? That we have fellowships, that we have residencies, right? And, and really trying to understand the importance of those things and how really, Art can be used as a weapon, right? A weapon that can be transformational in so many sense, just as it's transformed me, you know, as, as an artist. It's just for the way, you know, that I, I I see the world in so many ways. And yeah, um, you know, I feel that, you know, Fresno is going into the right direction now that we are emerging after COVID, right? Uh, things that, after things are opening up. I think Fresno now, for instance, is more open to have art, to have the murals, uh, being displayed, and of course, the community once again is just much appreciative. I will say, you know, once it, they see it now, it's they're there, and now you know they want more because it, it, once again they they just seen it there, and it's amazing to to see that, and we have that, and um, and and I think once again, I think the film just will be a tool to expand a conversation and continue the conversation going forward too. 
Thank you. I mean, this is so, again, this is so fascinating because of the history of Fresno. I know there, and I will say that there are cities all over the country that are known for their murals. And then, so I've included some links in the chat. I like Fresno has a mural district. So let me look it up. This link actually shows the mural district. It shows, it has a map. I guess it's in downtown. I mean, that's the main kind of hub of it. And so then why is this even on a city government's website? It generates tourism. It generates dollars. It supports the local economy. That's how you get change on the ground. It's coming together and you get someone to get put skin in the game based on, and we do, we start out with what's in it for me? What's in it for me? And I, I will say this, that artists uh, historically and still to this day are on the forefront of so much change, not only in terms of social justice activism movements, but in revitalizing communities. Now, sometimes that has gotten co-opted. We know that, uh, especially when people started really looking at gentrification, what would happen is artists, for example, in places like New York City or any city where there's a depressed area, like some of you're saying, this whole notion of the starving artist, well, artists will go into more affordable parts of a community. And then they will literally revitalize it. They will beautify it. And then it becomes desirable for developers. So just thinking about how can artists be more and in, in even intentional about that and say, um, once it's hit that tipping point, because artists go in there because that's where you can afford to live. And then it's like, and then also even from a collective standpoint, how to bring together resources so that artists can be the ones in part engaging and leading very intentional, equitable development, which those kinds of projects are starting to happen more across the country uh, as well. So really, really important. Um, so it's really interesting that in terms of the murals, the, um, the 16 murals or some of the murals that were depicted in the film out of those 16, we did see that one mural was painted over. I believe that was a Vanessa Guillen by a property owner. We saw that the trans lives, Black Trans Lives Matter, which have not been included in the larger Black Lives Matter movement, not super intersectional. That's why also Say Her Name came, right, became a part of movement because black women were largely not included uh, in the protests that would erupt across the country when, for example, an unarmed black man would be killed. Also, we know that Latinx uh, communities are the next community hit hardest by police brutality. Native American right, communities are hit really hard by police brutality. So a question that a student had was um, related to the issue of the property owner coming in, painting over a mural, the issue of the vandalizing of one of the murals. Do the murals still exist? Um, how did you feel when the murals were vandalized and painted over? And then a related question is uh, that students had or kind of related questions are, were our murals legal? I mean, obviously Fresno has a home mural district. And then do you get permission from property owners? Like how does all of that work? And the first question being, I think I entered it in the chat as well. Um, or maybe I wanna go back to, I'm gonna go back to the slide deck really quickly. Um, were you emotionally affected by learning that some of the murals were vandalized and erased for future generations to see? I mean, absolutely. Um, you know, just being invested into the project my, myself, you know, with the artists, like I said, uh, I will go, I will go shoot, you know, most of the time, um, you know, they will actually uh, start painting like around 6, 7 p.m. because it was so hot to paint, right? Um, you know, but they were there painting it, painting it. Um, they were there, you know, doing their thing. Um, and so I, I was invested. You just like them, perhaps, you know, I wasn't painting. Well, I actually have a little bit here and there. Um, but, you know, I was actually, um, you know, part of the project, right? Because I was there with them uh, as a paint and I was invested into everything that I was going through, right? I would interview them, of course. I would shoot them. So it became like a commodity, you know, with everyone and there. Um, but yeah, because I mean, I, and, and it's interesting to reflect about that, right? It's just, for instance, as a documentarian, what's your role, you know? So how 
are you, it's a question, should you be emotionally invested, right, into um, the communities that you are uh, documenting, right? Uh, what's the approach? You know, that that's some questions, like, for, uh, for instance, that are not written. Let, let's say, for instance, a doctor, right, has a call to ethics, right, that you need to follow, for instance, right? Uh, but for the documentarian, it's a little bit different because it is a question, right, like, um, why are we doing this, right? Uh, um, you know, what's the end result of this? Um, you know, how can I, you know, separate myself of being professional, right? Uh, but also trying to make a emotional piece. So there's a lot of questions that goes with it too. Um, but I mean, as a human being, I, I don't think you, you can stop yourself of feeling and having all this in being, you know, um, uh, uh, with the community, it, it's just, I think it's just hum human nature, right? To be attached to folks and to the project, right? To be emotional. Um, and so for instance, um, especially I think that, that the trans, the black trans uh, matter uh, mural was, you know, deliberately targeted because uh, it was uh, actually um, in, in front of that, it's another mural is uh, all uh, together uh, with the three ladies, uh, with the Hmong lady, the Latina lady, right? Uh, the black lady um so you see so uh, right behind it is a black trans uh, um, mural and so the the other mural was not vandalized but the black trans uh was vandalized and so you can see that it's, it's still kind of sad right that we still see that hate in the community right that you you will still see you know for instance that this owner had not any regards of the community about, you know, Vanessa, right? He used to paint over it. He didn't care about what other folks, you know, appreciate it and what does it mean for a lot of folks. So we still, excuse me, this con this hate, this, this connectivity that is, for instance, on some folks in their own community. And then to top it off, I think for reasons for me, it was really, <coughs> excuse me, funny story. Actually, I was not going to include the Vanessa story because I feel, you know, I was just like, I'm not going to time, I wasn't included. But when I find out about that, I was like, that needs definitely needs to be included now because I just felt so angry, right? And it was so, once again, so meaningful, specifically for the Chicano community here in Fresno, right? She really represents, uh, as you know, as I mentioned in the film, right? She was trying to strive to become someone better in the army, right? that she was a dreamer as a describer on the film, right? And it's a thing for a lot of young folks, I say, well, I feel young, right? So for a lot of folks, that are especially young, you know, that are striving, that are hustling, that are trying to do their best to succeed, right? And she represented a lot of us in, in the community, right? And she represented, and specifically for the Chicana Latinas, uh, it, she represented so much. And just for the owner to have no regards of the feeling of the community, right? I think was uh, first of all really frustrating, um, and second of all it, it was yeah it it, it just made me really uh, angry about that. But once again, how can I transform that angriness, right? Those hard feelings, and turn it on something powerful and beautiful. And the result was the scene uh, they actually made it into the film. Um, and so yes, it, it is it is a really. And making a documentary, it is a really an emotional journey, to be quite honest. I found myself sometimes, as I mean, so I had to listen to the interviews several times. I had to go to the fridge several times. And it gets really, um, you know, it, it gets really sentimental. It gets, you know, I, I'm a human being, like I said, at the end of the day. Um, but it, it's, once again, using that to really empower me and to really motivate me. And, and to really inspire me, you know, to do and continue this type of work. And so once again, it's how you use your energy. And this, and for me, it's just, how can I turn, you know, this, this uh, feelings, right, into something positive, positive and something beautiful. Thank you. And you really answered the uh, part of the question as well, that these murals and this community love, it lives on through your film. It will live on through your film. And we know once something is posted to social media, it lasts forever. I mean, if people learn that lesson the hard way, it can also be um, a very powerful, also power in right and healing in perpetuity. So I'm in terms of creating the film itself. Uh, so I'm going to pause here. I know there are others. So I want to pause because you've been talking for a long time. <laughs> I'm to give you 
but like anyone, I want to pause here to allow anyone who's here to ask someone a question that may be occurring to you now that we're learning so much more about, I mean, it's so exciting that Fresno is historically one of the cities across the country, and there are not many that's known for its mural art and where they have an entire district dedicated to this, because I've been saying, we need to take a field trip, you know, but it's it's there for anyone. But if anyone has a question or you would like to share um, some input, you can start doing so. We'll start with Erin and also feel free to um, do so in the chat as well. Go ahead, Erin. So uh, I might've missed it, um, but is there any like protection for these murals or is there like any way that people can, in a sense, like ensure that they stay up? Ah, that's an interesting question. Uh, you know, so a lot of this, um, you know, walls that got, um, you know, they were um, uh, used for, for the murals. So a lot of the owners of the buildings, um, you know, they were um, part of the movement, right? They also kind of uh, shared the feeling too. So a lot of these folks or the owners actually are down for the movement and say, yes, you know, let's paint on them. Uh, in some of them, for instance, the one in City Hall, obviously we had to get permission. Um, we had to get, you know, um, police, all these different permits, you know, to actually paint there, right? Uh, but I think as far as uh, a guarantee that this will last for however long, uh, as we saw with the uh, Vanessa Guillen um, mural, the new owner can just make a decision and say, I don't want any more, right? And so... Um, and so, but I, I think it's about, you know, the people, how, you know, if, if for instance, like Mary just uh, mentioned right now, right? And so it, it brings people. So a lot of, uh, for instance, we have in some places, we have a restaurant, right? Uh, for instance, the Floyd, uh, uh, George Floyd uh, and, you know, first responders mural, it's on the back alley of a, a restaurant. And so people go there and, and look at it and, you know, that attracts people too, right? Um but, and so I, I think to answer your question, it's pretty much up to every single owner of the building, right? That decides to keep it or not. But I think for what I've been keeping up in the last couple of, of months, it's that pretty much all of them, uh, except for um, for the uh, Vanessa Glenn, I, all of them are still kind of there, still intact. So we, we're still, so far, so good. And so, and once again, it's just, it, it six volumes, I think, to the fact that you know, the community really appreciate them. You know, the community really, really loves them, right? And so, yeah, and, and I think as far as people express, you know, their concern, I know, for instance, just between uh, me and, and, and us, for instance, when people find out about the, the you know, the new owner painted over the mural of Vanessa Glien, uh, you know, the the artist, he, he was getting, um, you know, messages about, oh, you know, let's do something, let's paint over, let's vandalize that wall, because people were angry. People were really, really angry. He's like, no, like, and so for instance, to give an update, so now the artist is trying to paint the same mural across the street. So he's trying now to fundraise, and he's trying now to really paint it, the same mural across the street now. Uh, and so once again, and the thing also speaks about the determination too of the artists, right? To really, once again, amplifying those voices to really not, not just show the talent and the art, but once again, is to make people think, to make the community beautiful, right? And is to think about the symbolism, once again, that these murals really, really have in the community it can be really, really impactful. Um, so yeah, so he's tried, hopefully pretty soon, um, you know, I'll give an update that we painted that the mural again across the street where it was. Wow. Talk about determination. And I mean, first of all, it was such a beautiful mural and really what Vanessa, she resonates and, and who she was and her family, right? The community rallying around her. It actually really started to crack the code in the military. I shared this, we were discussing this in class on Tuesday because I actually, um, have extensive military training and went to Naval Academy Preparatory School, was in Naval Reserve Officer Training Corps for years, and then had friends who became officers and, and just actually went to the uh, uh, Naval Academy in Annapolis and the misogyny and the horrendous, uh, just very normalization of uh, extreme sexual violence 
and abuse uh, directed towards men and women, right? And, uh, but it, like her death again was not in vain. And there was some real scrutiny and real attention and changes that really got, uh, were, were propelled for with the new kind of momentum, momentum because of her. And so she resonates with the Latinx community for so many reasons, with dreamers, with Chicanx women. And I will say all women, all women, uh, all people like all people who join the armed forces of the United States because we want to serve the country, um, because we want to better ourselves in this particular way, and all people who get subjected to this extreme hazing, the extreme use of power because of the military hierarchy with rank, which is really very rigid and is so 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 weaponized and abused. She resonated with so many people for so many reasons. And her and 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 raising awareness about her experience and her ongoing contribution, her legacy now as an ancestor, it's actually impacting recruitment numbers in the armed forces. Because this has been kept silent for so, 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 so long. And now it's like, what, you're trying to go serve your country, you're trying to better yourself, and you're subjected to rape and murder and it's and being disappeared, which is happening right, with men and women in the, so now, yeah, the recruitment numbers need to be down, right, so this is some of the impact, and of why I'm so glad that this artist is continuing, and doing, and doing it in a way where it's like, oh no, very intentionally, I'm going to paint this again, and it's going to be across the street from this other person, and hopefully the business is not doing too well, because we also talk with our dollars, so I would be putting that on social media, do not patronize this business, and then see how much that uh, owner uh, in particular needs the Chica Next Latinx community in Fresno to come out and support them, right? in their bottom line. Yeah. So I've just got fired up. So I don't, um, and I'm gonna pause again to see if anyone has a question or would like to share a comment and you can unmute yourself or you can enter it in the chat and we'll just pause for a minute. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. <laughs> I know that they did put all of their, so I'm also going to go back to the questions documentary. I, uh, I mean, the questions that the students came up with. Um, how was it knowing that there can be so many people who have the same goal and vision, especially in a diverse community? And I'm going to enter that in the chat. Yeah. It's such a rich question. Yes. I mean, th this project, I mean, it, it was co collaborative, right? It was not about, you know, me, it wasn't about the artists. It was about the community, how we really, um, you know, uh, came together, literally, right? And so I think it was quite, uh, I want to say this again, inspirational and powerful to see. And I think it's important to also to think about who you surround yourself with too, right? And so I'm thankful I'm really fortunate that I, you know, I'm part of this collective that, you know, that uh, I know there are folks that share a similar vision, like myself, right? Specifically when it comes to art, my approach to art, that some folks actually, you know, do also appreciate and share the vision of social justice and using art as a weapon, as the title of the film says, right? And so, um, yeah, I, I've been really fortunate, you know, once again, to be surrounded with all these wonderful individuals, the artists that painted the um, the murals, everyone that helped with the correlation of, you know, the, of the scheduling and all the administrative kind of things, right? The community, once again, you know, that they came through, for instance, we, you saw in the film, we have, you know, like an actual reveal kind of community event after every single um, a, a mural was done, right? And it, it, just, it just was so contagious of the positive energy uh, of the, um, you know, it was uh, once again, a process of healing, and specifically, like I said, a lot of folks, as we mentioned the film too, right? The Fresno is not the easiest uh, to survive and to be here, right? Specifically in this historical, uh, you know, um, past of Fresno, which has been really, um, you know, harsh with a lot of folks, right? And so how, once again, it was a process of us coming together to have conversation about these issues, right? But also as a way of feeling. And just once again, it was a, such a positive 
energy being there with the artists, with the community, with with the folks, you know, that that supported me throughout this process. Um, and so, yeah, and, and once again, it's important to think about who you surround yourself with, right? It's about surrounding yourself with that positive energy, people that uh, lift you up, people that believe in your talent, that believe in your cause, right? I think it, it, it is um, critical for everyone to, you know, to succeed, right? You don't have that support, uh, you know, the safety net or someone just even listen to you. Uh, it's going to be hard, right? But when you have people that, you know, that understands you, that share a similar vision of life when it comes to similar vision of the art or, or the approach, right? I think it's just, you know, makes you grow, it, it, not just on the personal level, but it makes us grow really a, as a community, right? And once again, making sure that everyone is included. Um, so yes, is a word of, of advice will be, you know, surround with folks, with those type of folks that they, they know they're going to protect you, that they know they're going to understand you, that they, you know, you know that they are going to be supportive or even sometimes your hopes and dreams some might sound crazy to folks, right? But find your niche, find that group that just really uplift you and make you feel powerful and beautiful, just you know, as I mentioned in the film. And and so for me, that that was really a uh you know an engine to keep on going because I knew I have all these people. First of all, they count on me to tell the story. For second of all, they support me, right? And actually, I was able to get some at the end of the film, you know, the last push, I was able to get some funding. For instance, to um to make the graphics, like I didn't do that, right? So I got some funding, uh, for that. So I can pay for that. So I can pay all, all the artists that help me. For instance, with the editing, with the sound mixing, and and that will make the the, the film stronger. And so yeah, like I said, I'm really grateful that I was able at the end not just to have the moral support of the community, but I, you know some financial support as well will really 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 help too and make it every every easier. Um, so yeah, it's about that surround. So with positive energies around with positive folks. Wow, that, and it just keeps, energy continues to generate like energy. Whatever it is, that just like generates like. So I'm someone, we hear a lot about giving um, people their flowers, not waiting until the celebration of life, after someone has transitioned over into becoming ancestors. And so what I would like to do, I know that I'm going to also add the input and comments that you all came up with in class uh, to this document that I will be uh, sending to someone. I would really, and again, um, I want us to take this time that we have remaining to give someone his flowers now while we're all together. So one way that you already were thinking about that is I would love if any anyone unmute yourself or enter it in the chat, what particular murals did you find beautiful, powerful, healing, and also what particular parts of the film, scenes from the film, did you find beautiful, powerful that resonated with you? And let's, like, this is literally... Um, each everyone that shares is going to be a flower in that bouquet that we're we're giving to Samuel today. Go ahead, Aaron. So me personally, I like the one with the indigenous women. The one I loved how it was black and white, and then you saw like the the paint to like represent like the their that they're trying to be seen. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, that was a beautiful one too. It's beautiful, and I also, and that paint, actually, because we haven't gone over that, in it, but it, the red paint represents this movement to call attention and to challenge, uh, unfortunately, very alarmingly high rates of missing and murdered Indigenous women. And, you know, being disappeared, no accountability. So thank you for sharing. It was very powerful. So we'll pause for anyone, like, what anything that you enjoyed about the film. So it could be specific, it could be a scene, it could be some feature of a mural. And again, um, you can unmute yourself or you can enter the description in the chat. Um, I know for that, it's to be a piggybacking off of what Aaron said. I, and this actually also has to do with a question. Um, I, I really think that, um, 
that scene of the native uh, mural really resonated. And obviously of seeing the warriors, I believe it was Geronimo and Standing Bull, I'm not positive, but um, one person asked um, and actually seeing the dancing, I think they had the, you know, the powwow kind of fancy dancers um, was very powerful. So one question really pertaining specifically to that scene in the film was why did you decide to include to the Native Americans dancing and I, why did you decide to include everyone's cultural backgrounds in the film? Because that, and in that question to me, especially because the student specifically identified what I believe it's a powwow dancing, that's a practice that didn't happen until after colonization and it yielded this unanticipated um, uh, practice of pan-native um, nations coming together all over the country in gatherings that continues to this day. And so I think out of the question also comes what resonated with the student. Um, but yeah, why did you, and I'll, I'll enter it in the chat, why did you decide to include everyone's cultural backgrounds in terms of the interviewing and the way that you shot the scenes? Yeah, so I think I want to start off talking about specifically about the Native American scene. Um, funny story about that. Um, once again, as a filmmaker, as an artist, you know, you plan to have everything go well, everything is good. However, the original footage of that, it got corrupted. And so I actually had, you know, a different uh, footage for that. It was like an actual community, big, large community event that we did to the reveal of the, of the mural. However, the actual files, for some reason, they got corrupted and I couldn't use them. And so, and, you know, I, going a little bit on a second question, right? Because I wanted to include a representation of Fresno. Fresno, it is also really, you know, multicultural uh, place as well, too, right? Just as, as, as an image of the country overall, right? We are a nation of different uh, ethnicities and backgrounds and socioeconomic status, right? And so I wanted to have that being represented in the film, how, you know, because that represents Fresno itself, how we are really diverse as well too, right? And once again, those uh, specific ethnicities and cultures that has been so uh, repressed, so, um, you know, been a long history of the struggle, right, to be represented. Uh, and so going back to, to, that, um, to that specific scene, yes, I was like, oh, I want to include, you know, uh, the story of the Native Americans, but, my files are corrupted. Uh, and so I called Bobby, which, you know, he is the uh, the artist and along with his brother, uh, I was like, can we recreate something, you know, like a scene, right, for um, uh, uh, for the for the documentary? And they're like, yes, I'm like, I think it'd be cool. We have, you know, someone dancing, you know, from the mural. Uh, uh, I think that would look so nice and beautiful. And he's like, excuse me, let me get back to you. And boom, the next day he's like, I found my nieces. They're gonna be doing the dancing. I was like, perfect, so let's let's do it, right? The next day we just got on, I got my camera and let's we do the interview. And I think um, that's, you know, the motivation too, like, let's just do it, you know, regardless of the issue, the hippos that, that we had, you know, the problems with the footage, there's always a way to do it, you know? And once again, that's when creativity comes to place, right? And so I was like, how can I tell this particular story with no footage? So let's just try to do it again, right? And so um, it was just wonderful that it just worked so well, right? That had more time. I know you guys remember the uh, uh, the the uh, the zoom in of the artist of Bobby and 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 the actual you know um, mural in the background, right? And I, I thought it was just such a nice shot, and and it was a little bit more planned, right? It was a little bit more. Like and also the um the slow motion with the uh, with the girls dancing too, and you know, it was a little bit more planned. I have more flexibility, and so I ended up I think ended up this beautiful montage right of the dancing and the slow motion and and the beautiful faces of these indigenous uh, girls right how it was so gorgeous and yeah and so colorful right it just, despite once again the message that um you know about the missing sisters Native American sisters right. But once again, it was a really colorful way to honor too, you know, the heroes too. And I think the girls symbolize so much too, right? It symbolize the future of the, the Native American community, right? And yeah, and I found my way. It's like, you know, we need to do this story some way, somehow. 
And we made it happen little in a day. It was like, can I interview you tomorrow? Can we find someone to dance? They're like, hold on, let me hold my beer, right? And so a few minutes later on Instagram, he hit me up. He's like, I already got, you know, I got time tomorrow at this time. I already have my niece and I think, uh, and someone else, and the gentleman that was also dancing, they're ready to go. So literally in a couple of hours, we were set up and the next day we made it happen. We did the shooting and boom, we, we got what we needed. And, and it's about that. Once I got also, it's about speaking despite, you know, this issues, this problem that you have, how can you use your creativity once again, right, to make it happen. And I was determined to make it happen. And boom, literally it was just a snowball effect. And one day we, everything got, got done and, and got completed. And I think it turned out pre pretty well, right? <laughs> That is amazing because again, losing the footage, it's like if you all have ever done any kind of work or, and you lose the whole, right, what, the paper or the project and you can't retrieve it and how you turn that setback into really one of the most powerful and visually stunning uh, parts of the film. And for me, like part of the reason I recognize what, because I've been to powwows, I've been for, I mean, for years and I love fancy dance because of the regalia because of the attire that's associated with that dance in particular and I also want to thank um Ava uh Faith obviously Roman Mayo and um for the comments in the chat as well as Estrella uh, oh my god okay Estrella uh, so I do want to show that I'm taking, in addition to the input that you all shared on Tuesday, I have been copying and pasting these um, really insightful and really love-filled right comments, the input that you all are providing here, that are going to start out the student input portion of the slide deck that I'm going to send to Samuel. Great. I uh, I would love to invite either through the chat or by unmuting yourself, a student would love to tell you what their favorite mural is out of the murals that were depicted. So again, you can do that in the, oh, go ahead and show you. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay. So um, I just want to say that my favorite mural was of Vanessa because I took I, before I came to college, I really wanted to go to the Marines. And so when I heard about her case, I was really like connected with it because it, I felt, well, I'm a Latina, you know, so that can be me. So because of her, I decided to go straight to college instead of going to the Marines because no one did anything for her because of her being Latina. And I, uh, I recently watched on the news about how another Latina army soldier was murdered in the same um, base in Fort Worth. I, I think that's where it was in Fort Worth. And um, I, again, saw how no one is doing anything because they just said it was an accident, but everyone knows it was because she was also sexually assaulted. So that really spoke to me. So I really want to thank you for that. No, I'm, I'm glad, like I said, that you were able uh, to reflect, right? I think it's important and, and rather than anything to reflect about the circumstances that, that we are, right? And um, I'm really glad that, you know, perhaps that I lift, you, lift your spirits a little bit too, once again, to remember, right, um, you know, her, her legacy, right? To remember who, who, who she stands for, what she represents. And uh, I'm really glad that you were able to feel that identification with her as well, right? And, and and her purpose and the legacy, I think just also, uh, you know, like they say, you're also a dreamer, right? You wanna get your education, you wanna bury yourself. And um, and it matters once again to going back to this point, right? A representation, right? How it really matters in every single way. And and, uh, and I think once again, it was important to have a story, which I almost, I didn't include her by the way. So almost, I was this close not to include her and I'm glad that I actually did. So thank you for your comment. Thank you, uh, Estrella, and you know, and I also think about coming together in community and recognizing that there is a connection with Latinas in the military not being protected in a way that really, you know, other groups who have also been more historically uh, participating, even as women. I mean, I think that 
white women, black women, for example, have been in the military historically longer than Latino women. And the connection between what's happened with Vanessa and now this more recent young woman with missing and murdered indigenous women, you know, um, with the targeting of transgender black and Latinx women um, who are genocided at a rate of only having a life expectancy of 30 to 35 years. And I'm also like, by you seeing that and you choosing to continue to pursue your dreams and to really go directly for them, because you are actually in a more, unfortunately, if you do decide to go to the armed forces, the preferable pathway is to do that after you complete your undergraduate degree or like through the officer channel, it affords a little bit more protection. And so the fact that you are carrying forward uh, Vanessa's spirit in her legacy in making these choices and to continue to pursue, to pursue your dreams is incredibly powerful. And um, how many more people is, you know, is she impacting and will she continue to impact? And so for that reason, I, I've really, I, I, I mean, I don't know if you can, if is the artist who wants to redo Vanessa's mural, does he have an Instagram handle? Can we yes, support yes. him? Yes. Can we come directly to his Instagram? So if you would uh, uh, share that in the chat. Yes, I'll do that right now. I've been, I'm like, I will seriously, I will go to his Instagram and figure out a way to support him in that project of redoing that just beautiful. It was just absolutely beautiful. Yeah, beautiful yeah. Art. Like I said, I, I think um, he's going back to that pretty, pretty soon. I think we're, based on the last conversation that I had with him, uh, I think he also going to start fundraising and all that stuff too. So uh, yeah, hit him up, hit him up and really tell him you need to have this, uh, you know, this uh, mural. Uh, he's just a two artist, by the way. Um, and so, you know, let him know, you know, we need this mural back. We need this mural back. Thank you so much. And then also based on the name, is he also um, a tattoo artist based in? Mm -hmm, mm hmm Okay. So artists. again, anyone, I have like four tattoos at this point. You can't see them unless I, so I periodically will get a, a they're very um, symbolic and also, but any of you who are interested in half tattoos would like to look into getting another tattoo, know of people in your network. Um, I would also like to see his work. And I mean, I would go all mm -hmm. the way to Fresno Um to support him with something that I do love is that the symbolism in my own sacred personal mythology that my, you know, my literal, you know, body is a canvas for that. So those are a couple of ways that we can support this artist. Mm -hmm. We only have three minutes remaining. So, I mean, this has been amazing. Uh, thank you all so much. And I, Australia, yeah, I was, I was, I was about to just cry over here. I'm unapologetic about expressing but it's so powerful. And I just know that all of the murals in your film and without your film and someone without your artistry, um, we would know nothing about this. And now what's happened with these artists, with this community coming together and with these murals, it's extending and it's touching even um, those of us who may not be able to physically go to Fresno and see the art or like who weren't a part of that movement. So it's an incredible legacy. And in the two minutes remaining, anything, any closing thoughts or comments from you, Samuel? Oh, I as as oh sorry. Cause I know I was like, yeah, we, it's um, from you. No, like I said, I just want to express my gratitude for inviting me and having the chance to really share a little bit more about me and my work. Uh, uh, and this is what I do it for, right? It's about this having these conversations, right? That uh, they can spark from from a film, right? And make people think about and theorize and, and talk about these issues that you know, otherwise we wouldn't have a chance to do so, as you mentioned, right? Uh, and so I just feel really, really honored and privileged uh, to be here uh, with such an amazing group of students. Uh, I'm pretty sure you know they're great. Um, and so, you know, like I said, so stay tuned a little bit too. Um, I'm actually, uh, this last, um, this last, uh, uh, winter break, I went to Mexico to document a documentary about DACA recipients going back to the hometowns and reconciliating with their identity, 
Um, and so I'm gonna start actually editing the post production of that right now, literally. Uh, and so that's gonna be a project. Also, I just got a um, that, that's through a fellowship. And so now I also got a grant from the Inner Tribal uh, Council of California to do a full uh, a 20 minute documentary to about uh, you know violence with um, the Native American uh, sisters too. So that's gonna be shooting in, in the summer as well too, right? And also I'm really glad to include, I just had my campus visit at Fresno State. So hopefully I'll be tenure with them as well too. So I think it went pretty well. So I think I'm gonna hear from them next week. And so great things are happening. And I think it shows that, you know, an immigrant that came to this country without speaking a word of English is literally living his dream, doing what, what he wants. I think you all can do it as well. So I really want to, you know, take the motivation that, you know, everything is possible. You work hard, you work for the bottom of your heart and give back to the community. Great things are going to happen. So I want to just close with that note. Oh, my God. Felicidades para todo. Y um, I would love, definitely like to stay connected with you. I have different ideas about the, what the DACA, all of that. It's creating a tremendous brain drain in the U.S. And I think Mexico is really benefiting. I travel to Mexico frequently. My happy place is in uh, Oaxaca and Puerto Escondido, the hidden ports. So I will. I cannot wait until that comes out. Thank you all, everybody. This was so powerful. This was so beautiful. And I'll see you on Tuesday in class where we will actually watch a feature on an Asian American, well, and Native Hawaiian muralist to wrap up the film festival this year. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. And I'll be emailing you. <laughs> Thank you so much. You guys have a wonderful day. Bye. Take care.